Hello, welcome to the second video on the integral test. In this video, we discuss a shortcut to the integral test called the P series. And so in the previous video, we learned that the series that is called the harmonic series, one over N, we learned that it diverges. The reason why it diverges is because it is more than the integral from one over X. Uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x, which is infinite. And so if the sum is more than an area that's infinite, then it must be infinite and it diverges. We also learned that 1 over n squared converges. And the reason why it converges is because the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared is actually equal to 1. The total area is 1, and this particular series is smaller than that area underneath the graph of 1 over x squared. So it's a subtle change from 1 over n to 1 over n squared. Why is this happening? It's because of the integrals underneath. So what about 1 over n cubed or 1 over root n? We're going to find out very quickly that this would be one of the the easiest test that you apply, it doesn't have the word test in it, but um, based on the visual of the value of the exponent on n, you can know whether it, the series will converge or diverge. Let's first title this a special kind of series. So we'll let p be a positive constant and series of this form we'll call p series. They're 1 over n to the p. Okay, it has to look like this, or a constant times it. And so we find out that this particular type of series, just by knowing the value of B, you'll know convergence versus divergence. If P is greater than 1, strictly greater than 1, then the series will converge. But if P is less than or equal to 1, then the series will diverge. And on the next slide, we see why. Okay, it's about the integral. Now, if you have 1 over n to the p, then the function that is tied to it with the integral test is 1 over x to the p. And we're interested in the interval from 1 to infinity, because that's what the summation goes from 1 to infinity. Um, this particular function, regardless of the value of uh, the positive value of p, it's continuous, it's positive, and it's decreasing. So the question becomes then, well, what's the values of p that make it converge? And convergence is basically going to be from the fact that when you go to integrate this improper integral, when you go to plug the upper bound into the antiderivative, what you need to happen is that x power, the power on x needs to be negative so you can put in the denominator. You see, after integrating x to the negative p, you get x to the negative p plus 1 over negative p plus 1. The only way this thing is going to converge is if when you plug in b, what's going to happen is the negative p plus 1 needs to be less than 0, pushing the exponent to be negative, forcing that whole term to actually be in the denominator. You see, b raised to a power in the denominator as b goes to infinity is going to end up going to, to zero and if there's a constant um up top there and so that's what's happening negative p plus one needs to be negative so that we can get convergence by moving the x term to the denominator and for that to happen this the symbol negative p plus 1 needs to be less than 0, meaning that p needs to be greater than 1, strictly greater than 1. Okay. We have the function 1 over n to the p that corresponds to this. I mean, th this function corresponds to 1 over n to the p. So it's called a p-series, and we'll get convergence when p is greater than 1. We'll get divergence when p is less than or equal to 1. And here's a number line that's helpful, uh, memory to it, help you figure this out. So cut the number line, starts at zero. We don't consider any negative p's. Um, cut the number line into two pieces, the piece from zero to one and the interval from one to infinity. 
And what we learn is that if P is a value between 0 and 1, it diverges while any other value of P, it converges. If it's equal to 1, it diverges as well. Okay, this is, this is going to be your favorite test because it's, it's visual, it's quick. We can answer five questions in under two minutes. All right, letter A, 1 over n to the 5 halves. The value of P, it's a P series, and the value of P is 5 halves. 5 halves is greater than 1, so it converges. 1 over root n. The value of P is a half here. That's less than 1, so it diverges. 3 over 2 n cubed. Those constants, they just, they're just in there to confuse you. Don't let them confuse you. Constants can be factored out of series. So take the 3 out, take the 2 out. We're talking about 3 halves times the series 1 over n cubed, which is a p series with p equals 3, which is greater than 1, so it converges. All right, gets a little tricky at the end here. So n, who's raised to the negative v, is really 1 over n to the e. e is a number like pi. We remember the first few digits of pi to be 3.14. We remember the first few digits of e to be 2.71. It's a p-series with p equals e. e is 2.71 greater than 1, so it converges. Okay, and then lastly, we have 1 over n to the ln of 2. Okay. You just have to decide where it is in relationship to 1. Is ln2 larger than 1 or is ln2 smaller than 1? Okay, it turns out that ln2 is smaller than 1. Why? What do you, how do you know that? Well, what is the ln of e? The ln of e is equal to 1. e is 2.71 and it goes on forever. doesn't repeat, doesn't terminate. Ln is an increasing function. If you plug something smaller into the as the input, you'll get something smaller as the output. And so ln of 2, or 2 is smaller than e, the ln of 2 must be smaller than the ln of e. Therefore, ln of 2 is smaller than 1. We get divergence. And that's it. So P series, whenever you can, it's a gift. Somebody gives you this as your test to use. Somebody gives you a series. This is your test to use. 1 over n to the p if it's in this format. Make one small alteration on it, though, and you're not allowed to use it. For instance, if you have something in letter b there, 1 over root n, something just as simple as a, an addition of a constant to that underneath the radical, it's no longer a p-series. It'll be like a p-series, and in the next section we'll look at comparing to a p-series using the comparison test but it needs to be exactly one over n to the p nothing else but a constant maybe which you can factor out <clears throat> okay all right thank you thank you for watching uh, my name is nakaya rimmer and i'm here to help you through this journey um we're, we're building up a library of tests this represents, I guess, what would be the fifth test if we're counting. Uh, we learned three tests before. They weren't really tests, but geometric series, telescoping series, and the test for divergence, the integral test, and this here is a shortcut to the integral test. We could do the integral test on all of these, but why when there's this shortcut? Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask, uh, like, and subscribe. Um, and I'm here to help you through this journey. If you have any questions, reach out to me. See you in the next video.